Are you a new or returning player trying to figure out what's new in Dauntless or where to start? Look no further because I'll be going over everything you should know to get yourself going. I will have timestamps available if you're only looking for certain info. Alright, let's begin. Starting in the town of Ramsgate, you'll have a HUD layout that provides your name, title, and guild. A compass to navigate through town, a friends drop-down box where you can invite and add friends, create a guild, and create a slayer link. And if you're wondering what a slayer link is, it's basically a reward system that rewards friends who hunt together in a party. You can have three links at one time, and once seven days have passed, depending on how much XP you have earned together, will determine the amount of rewards you'll be able to get. After that, you're free to either change the friends you wish to link up with, or relink with the same friends. Alright, onto the remaining portions of the HUD, you got the typical chat, your items, and experience bars, which I'm going to explain what these bars mean. The top number is your current weapon skill level, which caps out at level 20, and the one below is your prestige level. The top bar is your typical XP bar, and the one below is banked XP that stores extra XP after you've reached the max level. And in return, this will give you a head start on leveling the next time you prestige, which can be done by using the Spark Forge located over here. Okay, since I have the map up, let's explain the characters and roles that many of them have. Marcus, Kat, Briani, and Zelia are all NPCs that strictly provide only quest as far as I can remember. Gregaria Flint here is our store and hunt pass NPC, and in the store you can buy various cosmetic skins, emotes, banner designs, XP boost, and more with real money known as platinum. The hunt pass or battle pass for those familiar with other games is a pass you level up to earn rewards. There is both a free track and a paid premium track. At the end of the track, once you've collected all the rewards in the pass, special coins can be earned each time you level up the pass for there on out. These coins, which can also be earned by completing challenges, are made to be spent in the reward cache, where you can unlock more cosmetic skins and other rewards. To access the cache, you'll find it in the menu under Hunt Pass and Rewards. Next, we have Wills, Zai, and the Scarred Master, who are all NPCs that you can go to to craft weapons. To craft a weapon, you're going to need materials to make it, and each weapon will have a perk, and some can also have unique effects on them. The weapons can also display the benefits of its element type, as well as its cons. There is also an option to unhide and show more info if you're wanting to know more information about the weapon. After you craft a weapon, you'll be given the option to power search the weapon, which fully upgrades the weapon and maxes out its stats. To power search, you're going to need Aether Hearts, which can be earned by either spending 100 Aether Sparks and prestiging a weapon class, or if you're not a fan of prestiging, you can spend 200 Aether Sparks instead. Aether Sparks, for those who are wondering how to collect them, can be acquired in many different ways such as hitting certain levels in a hunt pass or reaching a certain level in a weapon mastery. But the one method that is easier to do is to gather them by completing island events, which are events that pop up while on one of the hunting ground islands. Alright, let's go back to the map. Next we have Moira Heights Skitter. This lovely NPC is our armor crafter. Like the weapon crafting menu, the armor menu isn't very different. But one I want to bring up is these little slots right here. You might have noticed them when I was going through the weapon crafting layout, so now I think it's a good time to go over what these cell slots are. Cell slots, as the name implies, are used to put cells in, which gives you special perks that enhance your slayer in various ways. And with a proper build, you can quickly tear a behemoth apart. So to do that, here is what you'll need to know. There are five cell types, and each cell will have perks related to that type. And the slot that is on the weapon or armor piece can only use that type of cell, making it very important if you're looking for a particular perk. The only exception to this rule is the prismatic cell slots, which are only found on legendary equipment. It is also very important to know that there is a limit on how much benefit you'll get from a perk, and that limit is when the perk reaches plus 6. Once at plus 6, the perk is no longer increasing its benefits, so to fully utilize an armor build in most cases, you'll want to have as many plus 6 perks in your build as much as possible. And a simple way to set yourself up for that is to pair up two armor pieces with the same perk. That way, once you're able to upgrade the armor pieces, you'll have the perk automatically maxed without using any cell slots. Alright, going back to the map of Ramsgate, our next NPC is Granny Strega. She is our pylon and tonic crafter. Pylons, and even more important, tonics, are useful items that will buff the Slayer. And speaking of items, there are also items such as grenades you can craft if you talk to Zai. 
The next NPC we have is Arkan Drew and the Middleman. Arkan Drew is our Lantern Crafter and the Middleman is your Omni Cell Crafter. Your Lantern is a strong special ability you can activate when this meter is full. The bar here is your Omni Cell ability. Not to confuse this with the cell you use on your equipment, an Omni Cell's passive and active ability helps further tailor a build to help fit your playstyle. And speaking of cells, once again the middleman can also exchange cells by taking two cells and creating one at a higher level. Exchanging cells is also super helpful if you're looking for a particular perk, but to do that you will need to have a bunch of cells. So for gathering cells there are many paths you can take to do this such as opening cores at the core breakers located around town, slaying behemoths, or buying some of the exclusive cells in the trial shop. Okay, since I brought up the trial shop I think it's time to bring up who Lady Luck is. Lady Luck is our Trials NPC, and these Trial Behemoths that she tasks Slayers to take down will be very challenging. Slaying any of these Behemoths within a certain time gives either Steel Marks or Gilded Marks depending on the difficulty you choose to take on. These marks you earn are what you use to spend in the trial shop which have a wide range of rewards such as cells, items, weapon specials, and cosmetics. Plus, there's a secret cosmetics you will unlock if you can hold a spot on the leaderboards by the next behemoth rotation. Moving on to the last NPC I will bring up is Oz, who is our events NPC. So anytime there is an event, especially during holidays, it's a great idea to pay a visit to Oz to see what special goodies you may be able to earn. Alright, finally moving away from Ramsgate, let's move on to the menu. In the menu, I'm only going over some of the things we haven't talked much about or at all. Starting with the first on the list and going into the hunt section, you have the hunting grounds. And in any of one of the islands you decided to depart to, we'll have several behemoths on the island that you can take down alone or publicly with other slayers. In this section, you can also see there is a list of details ranging anywhere from behemoths to events that can be found whenever you select an island. Next, we have Escalation. An Escalation is basically a tower climb mode where you have to try and survive all rounds, with the final round being one of the five unique and powerful behemoths that are normally only found here in this game mode. You can either choose one of the elemental themed Escalations or select Patrol and be randomly sent to one of them. I will mention taking down any of these Escalation behemoths will unlock powerful legendary equipment that you can craft. These weapons will have legendary abilities, the option to select unique effects of any of the weapons of the same element, and have prismatic slots so you can insert any cell that your heart desires. There is another legendary weapon separate from Escalation that you can get from the hunting grounds, but I'll leave that for you to discover. Skipping over to trials and jumping to missions, these quests are basically unique quests that have a small spin to them. As for training grounds, it's a perfect place to test some builds or familiarizing yourself with a weapon. Next up on the menu we have My Slayer, and under My Slayer you'll be able to equip everything you want, as well as customize your Slayer with a long list of accessories you wish to wear. Back to the menu again we have the Slayer's Path which allows you to unlock everything you wish to do and gain passives that will strengthen your Slayer as you progress and unlock each node. To unlock most nodes you're going to need Rams which is the game's universal in-game currency and Merits. Merits which are only used in the Slayer's Path can be earned in plenty of ways such as completing bounties. And that brings up our next menu section we'll talk about. Under Quest and Progression, the first one on the list will display the quests, bounties, and challenges you have available. The Quest tab is self-explanatory for the most part, and Challenges tab is basically dailies and weeklies if you're familiar with other MMOs. But the one I want to talk most about is the Bounties. Bounties are cards that will reward you with merits, weapon skill XP, and hunt pass XP once they've been completed. To get bounties, you're going to need bounty tokens, which can be earned by opening daily fountain cores or by purchasing tokens. Once you can use a token, you'll be able to choose one of the options available to be your bounty. Onto the journal, this is where you want to read more about the lore and have brief explanations on how to play the game. 
The last one on the list here is Mastery, and Mastery more or less shows your accomplishments and how well you've mastered a behemoth or weapon. As you progress, Rams, Merits, Cores, Aether Sparks, or Titles will be given to you each time you reach a level in the Mastery. As for the remaining tabs, these are pretty much standard in most games or MMOs. The Moves list does have some great information regarding weapon combos and some general combat info. Alrighty, that should cover everything regarding the menu and everything within Ramsgate. I think it's time we jump into the Shattered Isles. Now that we're out and about, let's go over a few things you may want to know during combat. When attacking the Behemoth, you'll notice there is a few different colored numbers popping up. White is the normal base damage that the player deals to the Behemoth. Yellow means part damage, and after the damage threshold is met, the part will break allowing the player to possibly acquire one of the materials from that part. Blue means staggered, and when the threshold is met, the behemoth will collapse and be exposed for a short time. Plus, you can tell the behemoth is about to be staggered by the swirling stars around the behemoth's head. And red means wound, and when you exceed the threshold on the behemoth part, that area will begin to leak aether from its body. Any player that hits that part will have multiple stats get buffed for a short period of time. Another thing I would like to point out is if you're using an elemental weapon, some elements such as Shock, Flame, Frost, or Terra will inflict a status debuff or effects that will aid the Slayer in various ways once a threshold is met. And if you see this indicator, this means the Behemoth can be interrupted during this time window. To find out what moves can do this, check out the move list in the menu I mentioned earlier. Lastly, and before I forget, there is also a behemoth life bar, and you can also find chests located throughout the island. You need a key to unlock them, which you can get by purchasing in the store or by opening fountain cores. Alright everyone, that should cover nearly all the things you'll need to know to get yourself started in the right direction to become a slayer a behemoth should fear. If you want to learn more on how to slay a certain behemoth, check out my behemoth breakdown guides. This video did take some time to make, so don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date on the content I upload. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope to see you in Dauntless.